Broadcast airs right here on AM 900, FM 100.7, WKXV, every Sunday at 7.45 a.m. Thank you for listening in today. In this reading, I was struggling with the problem of becoming submissive and obedient to do all that the Holy Bible has instructed me to do. And to be the person in the sermon the Holy Spirit gave me that I read last week called Subdued. My voice is a bit scratchy today, so please bear with me. The journal reading. Then sings my soul. My soul. That mysterious someone on the inside of me somewhere. That place where the real person really is. What definition have I for the soul? Call it ego. Call it the heart, mind, will, emotions. Living inside the spirit of man is the battle for holiness and perfection within my soul or with my flesh or both. Where do my desires and emotions come from? That part of me full of resistance to all that is good and is able to move me toward my goal. I have given my soul to God. He has redeemed it. It doesn't even belong to me. Yet I must have strong self-discipline and persistence to keep it going in the right direction, to draw it out of itself, to get it to share, to love, to submit, to be kind and gentle, to deny itself, to create, to be spontaneous and relaxed and take life as it comes. It's a continual and perpetual struggle to fight its resistance, the desires of the flesh that will have nothing to do with spiritual things. Where did I read the words that go something like this? My soul searches for a love that will permanently fulfill its longing. That is the quest for every soul. A love to fulfill a deep longing desire for acceptance and understanding. Not knowing the only thing that can really fulfill that desire, that need, is the love of God. Not knowing Jesus and searching for fulfillment outside of his love is like grasping at straws. Nothing really satisfies. There's nothing to hold on to. Even if I had everything my heart desired, would my soul be happy? It is well with my soul, but my flesh is never satisfied for very long. I see that my flesh cannot be satisfied. The more I give in to its desires, the more it wants. Is it about denial and sacrifice? Is it about suffering? I know all who live godly will suffer in the flesh, in the soul, and in spirit, and that I must go forward as a soldier of Christ and count it all joy. I have the love of God in the Holy Spirit abiding in me. I am a spirit. I have a soul. And I live in a body, so I am taught. But what of seeking to be pure in heart and having the mindset to holiness and godliness? There is a continual struggle. My flesh, my carnal mind, will never be satisfied with the things of the Spirit. The Bible says they are against one another. What does it take to overcome the flesh that my soul may show forth the fruits of the Spirit? I gave my soul to Jesus Christ and am a born-again believer in God. I know he loves my soul and takes care of it. What more could I desire? What more could it want beyond God himself? What a mysterious thing, this my soul, which now seems to have a dual nature. The old man was born again into a new man, a new creature in Christ Jesus. The Bible says, yet... The flesh refuses to give place. The carnal desires are not the will of the spirit. And it's a constant battle to stay in the spirit, having and obeying the mind of Christ. Oh God, I can only pray that in your keeping of my soul, you cause me to know you, to see you, and to be able to hear you, and to follow in your will for my life. Cause my soul to be satisfied 
with knowing it will always belong to you. When I was young, I looked to the world for fulfillment. I looked to the measures of man for success. I didn't want to be the unknown soldier. I wanted to do something grand that would leave an indelible mark upon mankind to say, look, I was here, I was alive, here's my contribution, my legacy. But no one really knew me or understood my goals or loved me but God himself. He came to my rescue, saved my soul, and filled me with his spirit. In my despair, he said, be still and know that I am God. And so he is, always watchful, quiet, deep conversation that can only be felt in the inner recesses of the mind and heart. Yet not so silent, because I know he speaks to me through his word and through his Holy Spirit that he is sent to watch over and take care of me. I love my Jesus very deeply, so much that I can hardly wait to see him face to face to bow down before him and kiss his feet with a grateful heart for all that he has done for me. He rescued me, and now I will never be alone, nor lonely again. In my youth, I wanted a husband, a home, and a family. I married one man after another, seeking to find a helpmate to love and protect me and provide for me and my children, someone I could lean on, and trust with the secrets of my heart. I wanted a man of God, someone who had a relationship with him and wanted to be like Jesus, but that was not to be. I said in my haste, all men are liars. Suffering abuse and betrayal, being unequally yoked to a man who is a Christian in name only and doesn't have any idea what a relationship with God is, one who doesn't pray, read the Bible, or attend church, or live the Christian life, or even try to, to live in submission and obedience to such a man is hell on earth, or at least it was for me. I couldn't bear it, and to him I was a religious fanatic. He was not capable of loving a wife the way Christ loves the church, willing to give his life for her, as it says in Ephesians 5, 25-32. I am seeking to know God and long for a loving relationship with my Creator, and I have found a love that will not let me go. I shall surrender to His will and submit my soul to Him until at last I am completely subdued. I am never alone anymore, nor lonely. He gives me such unconditional love and acceptance, holding me in a tender, a tender embrace that completely engulfs my mind and body. Being in his presence is a feeling that my soul and spirit craves for more of and can never get enough of. His love is always there, waiting, unresponsive, an unmanifested love and tenderness beyond description. Lord God, Yahweh, only you have shown me what true love is. All I knew of the love of man is that it is a razor that leaves your soul to bleed. I knew nothing of real, unconditional love. I believe in you. I trust you to be present always. Your spirit is constantly with me. All I have to do is speak your name, and you are there to chase away the enemy of my soul. I wonder if I'm not my own worst enemy, going headlong instead of seeking your will in everything I do first. Why am I so slow to learn? Why doesn't my soul respond to discipline? What will it take for my soul to become submissive and to be subdued, to become the way you want me to behave, the way you created me to be? When will I recognize the enemy and know how to win the battles of faith and not fall into his trap. I always blame myself and seek forgiveness when I fail the test of my daily walk. When will I become mature and learn and be like you? 
and do what I know to do is right. It's taking so long. When will I be able to suffer silently and hold my peace and keep my mouth shut? When will I be able to give place? When will pride be gone, burned out of my life? When will I be able to count it all joy, to sacrifice and to submit, not to defend myself, knowing love is my defense? Me? I defend myself, my pride, my honor, my good name. I get angry. I demand my right, all the while knowing deep inside I have surrendered all my rights to you. I have no right. I know you are my defense, yet I cannot keep silent. Why do I let those fiery darts pierce my armor and hurt my pride? I know hurt pride causes anger. And I know that without pride, the Bible says there is no contention. And great peace have they which love thy law, and nothing shall offend them. Why can I not submit? Grow up spiritually. It's so hard to do. My very nature seems to rebel against me. I know what to do and still don't do it. I hear in my mind, give up. Just quit trying. It's no use. You can't win. But for me, there's no quitting. The further I go, the older I get, the more I realize it doesn't get any easier. But I will get stronger. For in my weakness, he is made strong. One day, my soul will be so subdued, pride and vanity will be no more. I will be able to follow like one having hind feet on high places. Soon, no matter what comes, be it good or be it bad, be it feast or famine, be it abundance or poverty, be it friend or foe, I will go forth victorious in the mind of Christ Jesus, carrying my cross to the end of the journey. It's just not easy to do, to take up the cross and be satisfied with the burden of the flesh upon my soul. Please help me pass every test, Lord, to come through as gold dried in the furnace of affliction, purified and made holy, made perfect, that I may dwell with you in the kingdom where you are forever and ever. This is the end of the journal reading. The 20 plus scripture references are Psalm 23, 3, 25, 20, 31, 7, 35, 9, 42, 1, 69, 1, 86, 2, 94, 17, 103, 1 and 2, 119, 165, 131, 2, 139, 14, 143, 8, Mark 10, 21, Ephesians 1, 4, and 6, 16, Numbers 15, 20, 1 Timothy 6, 12, 2 Timothy 3, 17, James 1, 4, Proverbs 13, 10, and 2 Samuel 22, 34. Please join me in prayer. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for loving us just the way we are and for your unending patience and grace to help in time of need. Your faithfulness is beyond explanation and your love beyond description. Thank you for allowing us to be, to all be able to praise you with grateful hearts forever. Amen. For a copy of this transcript, send a self-addressed stamped envelope to WKXC and ask for May 16, Program 12, My Soul, My Soul. Hope to see you next week. Thank you for listening. Until then. That was the Becoming Love Radio Broadcast with Dr. Diana Houston. The Becoming Love Radio Broadcast is right here on AM 900, FM 100.7, WKXV, every Sunday at 7.45 a.m. Please send all mail and correspondence to WKXV Radio, 5106 South Middlebrook Pike, Knoxville, Tennessee, 37921. AM 900, FM 100.7, WKXV.